Mr. Beat here from IamMrBeat.com, and hold on to your butts because I have something really controversial I'm going to say. You ready? I love Christmas. What's that? You love Christmas too? Well, perhaps this is more controversial to say. I love Christmas movies. I'm not just talking about the classics. I even like the mediocre ones. You know, like Christmas with the Cranks. Hey, speaking of Christmas with the Cranks, a big part of its plot is the fact that a couple wants to skip Christmas and then their entire community basically bullies them because they are not conforming. It's actually kind of messed up. Anyway, this got me thinking about just how popular Christmas is. Apparently, it's really freaking popular. According to my own research, almost half of the entire world celebrates Christmas in some form or another. Now, the customs vary. Here in the United States, where 90% of us celebrate it, we put a tree in our living room and put ornaments and lights on it. We put colorful lights all over our houses and in our yards. We also exchange gifts after wrapping those gifts with pretty paper and exchange Christmas cards. We put up wreaths, mistletoe, garland, holly, and nativity scenes. More on what those nativity scenes are about a bit later. We listen to Christmas music. I've made lots of Christmas music myself over the years, by the way. <laughs> You serious, Clark? And then, of course, there's Santa Claus and all the folklore around that dude. Some of us even go Christmas caroling and go see the Nutcracker. <sighs> But around the world, there are other Christmas traditions, some of which are horrifying. In Austria, parents have historically told their kids that if they don't behave, a horned, hairy beast named Krampus will snatch them up at night and put them in a wicker basket. In Catalonia, children feed a log every night and cover it with a blanket so it doesn't get cold with hope that it will poop out presents for them on Christmas. I'm not joking. In Iceland, they don't just get Santa Claus the night before Christmas, they get a bunch of trolls visiting children and leaving them presents in their shoes and rotting potatoes if they misbehaved. In most Latin American countries, the baby Jesus leaves the presents for kids. In Japan, the few folks who celebrate Christmas there celebrate by getting a bucket of chicken from KFC. Jeez, humans are so weird. We're weird, okay? Anyway, how did this Christmas holiday become so freaking popular? You know what? Someone should make a video answering that very question. Mr. Beat, you're in that video right now. I am? Well, that explains this hat then. Thanks, Squirrel. Okay, here is how and why Christmas became so popular. First of all, Christmas is shortened from, quote, Christ's Mass. Christ being Jesus Christ, the central figure in the world's largest religion, Christianity, and Mass being the main act of worship in the Roman Catholic Church, the largest and oldest Christian denomination. However, the earliest Christians didn't celebrate Christmas. It wasn't until the 4th century that Christian writers started talking about how there ought to be a celebration of the birth of Jesus. AKA the Nativity. But when? Well, no one knew when Jesus was born, so they debated it for a while. Soon though, December 25th became the preferred date. Why? Mainly since it was nine months after March 25th, the date of the spring equinox, which was a date that had been linked to the conception of Jesus, interestingly. December 25th also was when the Romans marked the winter solstice, or the darkest day of the year. After it, the sun stayed visible a little bit more each day. But there's even more to the story. Some early Christians connected Jesus to the sun, and wouldn't you know it, there were pagans in the Roman Empire who already celebrated the birth of Sol Invictus, or the sun god, on December 25th. Pagans, by the way, were folks who simply held religious beliefs other than those of the biggest world religions. Anyway, not only that, pagans also celebrated another holiday from December 17th to December 24th called Saturnalia to honor the god Saturn. And many of the traditions of this holiday, like gift giving and having a big feast, were carried over to Christmas. Dr. 
Andrew Henry has two wonderful videos over on his channel, Religion for Breakfast, looking at the origins of Christmas. He basically concludes that there's no solid evidence that proves that Christians were just trying to make Christmas the new and improved sun god's birthday. Regardless, the first recorded Christmas celebration took place in Rome on December 25th, 336. 14 years later, Pope Julius I recognized December 25th as the date to celebrate Jesus Christ's birthday. And in the following years, the holiday began to spread throughout the Roman Empire and beyond. By 432, Christmas had spread to Egypt. Up North in Scandinavia, the Germanic peoples already had their own holiday season going on with the winter solstice, and it merged with Christmas quite well. Later, it became known as Yule. You know, troll the ancient Yuletide carol, fa la 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 la, la 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 la. Anyway, after the Roman Empire fell, but the Eastern Roman Empire, or Byzantine Empire, kept on keeping on, Epiphany, or the Christian feast that celebrates the three wise men, or three kings, visiting the baby Jesus, was a much bigger deal than Christmas. It's still widely celebrated today, by the way, traditionally on January 6th. Still, they celebrated Christmas too, and the celebrations were linked with a season known later as the 12 Days of Christmas, since that's how many days linked the two holidays. After Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne Emperor, which just so happened to be on Christmas Day in 800, Christmas became a bigger deal, mainly since much of Western Europe had reunited. By the Middle Ages, Christianity had become the dominant religion in the continent, replacing most pagan religions, and thus Christmas also became pretty widespread. During this time, it was common for folks to celebrate celebrate with big feasts and lots of consumption of alcohol. It was also when traditions like gathering ivy, holly, and other evergreens for decorations and caroling became associated with Christmas. However, hardly any of the Christmas songs they sang back then are remembered today. One song that goes back at least to the 1500s that we still sing today, however, is God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. The first recorded Christmas tree appeared in modern day Eastern France in 15. 1576. By the 1500s, however, there was now a backlash against Christmas. Talk about cancel culture and a war on Christmas. True story. The Puritans wanted to cancel Christmas, not only since they believed it brought out the worst in people with all the excessive drinking and partying, but mainly since the Bible didn't say it was okay to celebrate Christmas. In 1647, the English Parliament even made it illegal to celebrate Christmas. But that didn't last long. As much as the Puritans fought Christmas during the 1600s, just too many freaking people around the world enjoyed the holiday too much. It it wasn't going anywhere, okay? Flash forward to the 1800s and Christmas is celebrated by the vast majority of Christians. But because Christianity had spread all over the world by this time, Christmas was bigger than ever before. That said, it's important to realize that at the time, Christmas was nowhere near as huge as it is today. For example, let's briefly look at Santa Claus. You've heard of Santa Claus. But yeah, it wasn't until the 1800s that people started talking about Santa Claus. Oh, don't get me wrong, the origins of Santa Claus go back to a real extraordinary person, a dude named Nicholas, later known as Saint Nicholas, who was famous for his generous gifts to the unfortunate. Later, kids across Europe would get gifts in their stockings hanging up by the fire or shoes to celebrate Saint Nicholas. In fact, the kids were told it was Saint Nicholas putting gifts in their stockings or shoes. Later on, England borrowed the Saint Nicholas meme to come up with their own personification of Christmas in the form of Father Christmas, a bigger, jollier version of St. Nicholas that also gave gifts. Later on, the Germans and Swiss had Kris Kringle, which translates to Christ Child, who delivered presents to their children. The Dutch and Belgians, meanwhile, had Sinterklaas. But what the silly Americans did was also call their version of Father Christmas Santa Claus, or Kris Kringle, and ultimately their version version is the most common one the world knows today, mostly due to American dominance in the world in the 1900s. Name? Chris Kringle. Name? Santa Claus. 
Name? Père Noël. Babo Natale. Père's Nicole. Papa Gijo. There were three pieces of literature in the 1800s that greatly helped popularize Christmas. First was The Sketchbook, a collection of essays and short stories written by the American author Washington Irving, first published in 1820. Irving wrote multiple stories about the meaning of Christmas and its traditions, and it literally changed people's perceptions of the holiday, even Puritans. In fact, thanks to Irving's writings, people began to view Christmas as more family-oriented, as a day of peace and nostalgia, instead of the crazy, rowdy, party-oriented holiday it had been in previous centuries. Three years later, the second piece of literature to make Christmas so popular was the poem A Visit from St. Nicholas, popularly known today as Twas the Night Before Christmas, which helped popularize the tradition of not only Santa Claus, but the whole idea of gift-giving on Christmas. As the poem grew in popularity, so did gift-giving in the beginnings of the commercialization of Christmas. In other words, more and more companies realized they could make some good money during Christmas time. The the average size of a child's wish list has grown substantially in the last 200 years. In the 1800s, for example, children rarely asked for more than one item, and usually these items were of an intangible nature, something like a family member's health, or the end of war, or famine. I remember that. Try fitting that down the chimney, huh? <laughs> Today, the average child asks for 15 gifts per letter. Not that far off, really. The third piece of literature that popularized Christmas during the 1800s was a Christmas Christmas Carol, a novella by Charles Dickens, first published in 1843. That's the one about Ebenezer Scrooge. Bah! Humbug. I say bah! Humbug! Bah! Humbug! And a bah humbug to you! Dickens actually was partially influenced to write the story based on the revival going on in Britain of old Christmas traditions, and it was a smash hit. I'd argue that it remains one of the most influential stories of all time, and is even a big reason why people first started saying, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. <laughs> the same year A Christmas Carol came out, Sir Henry Cole began producing the first commercial Christmas card. Four years later, the candy cane, which later sold well around Christmas, was invented. For the rest of the 1800s, Christmas became more and more elaborate and harder to avoid. It became more secular, meaning not just Christians celebrated it, and it became a big industry, as more and more consumers were swayed to spend their hard-earned money on gifts decorations, and events during the Christmas season. You might be surprised to learn that it wasn't until at least the 1900s that many of the Christmas traditions and icons we celebrate today entered the zeitgeist. That's when most of the Christmas songs we listened to became a thing. That's when Christmas movies obviously became a thing. Santa being in a red suit, not invented, but popularized by a Coca-Cola ad campaign in 1931. Also in 1931, the first Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Eight years later, Robert Louis May published a poem to help get more customers in the Montgomery Ward department store. That poem? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Ten years later, Johnny Marks turned it into a song. Fifteen years after that, NBC turned it into a stop-motion animated television special. In the following decades, many more Christmas stop-motion animated TV specials followed. Oh, and Marks wrote a bunch of other Christmas songs that are still popular today. By the end of the 1900s, the Christmas season was the peak selling season for retailers in most countries around the world. Around the world, I say? Oh yeah, by this time, it was global. Almost everywhere you went, Christmas was inescapable. Also by the end of the 1900s, Christmas Day became the least active day of the year for business and commerce. The one day where if you want to go to any place of business, and it's probably closed. In recent years, two main things have really driven the influence of Christmas. The aforementioned commercialism and nostalgia. Regarding commercialism, Christmas being profitable continues to make it a bigger deal each year. Regarding nostalgia, often what people love about Christmas are the fond 
fond family memories they have from when they grew up. So by the time kids grow up, they're like, let's do this again. Christmas is a time when our old relationships are often renewed and shared memories in these old relationships, including, I might add, memories of Christmas pop culture, help fuel that. And because of that, today Christmas is the second most popular holiday in the world. You thought I was going to say most popular, didn't you? But no, New Year's Day is more popular. I'm really happy for you, Nick, by the way. I think, you know, the whole Christmas thing's taken off, and I think that's just awesome. Yeah, it's catching on, yeah. yeah. And each year, Christmas becomes even more popular, even in places like China, where the Chinese government isn't too thrilled about that, to be honest. In other words, Santa Claus is coming to town whether you like it or not. You might want to lock your doors. Especially if Krampus comes to town. This video is sponsored in part by History Hit, a streaming service that I recently found out about. Remember when the History Channel actually used to play history content? Well, History Hit is like that but better. It features more than 500 shows and 1,000 podcast episodes, the biggest one, of course, being the legendary Dan Snow's History Hit podcast. But History Hit's award-winning podcast network also includes The Ancients, Warfare, Gone Medieval, and not just the Tudors. I've been especially digging their video content, though. In particular, their documentary called The Christmas Truce, about the incredible true story of the spontaneous ceasefire along the Western Front during World War I and the Christmas of 1914 in which German and British soldiers hung out in no man's land and just talked and even exchanged gifts. Go to the link in the description of this video and use code MrBeat to save 50% on your first three months of service. I also recently released another Christmas video over on one of my other channels, The Beat Goes On, about the classic film It's a Wonderful Life. So I'm putting the link in the description for that as well. And this video is also sponsored by my generous and intelligent Patreon supporters. And now here's my monthly shout out to all my Patreon supporters who donate at least 15 bucks or more each month to my channel. I'll start with the 20 bucks or more a month folks first. Thanks to Alexander Major, Alicia Solberg, Andrew B, Anthony Beckett, Austin Sims, Brady Bardwell, Corey Ryman, Dr. Paul J. Lilly, Elijah Ellis, Josie Ramsey, Kyle Fazbinder, Matt Standish, Neo R14, Nick Everett, Osbers Gaming, Pat Iapica, Sean Connett, Thomas and William Rausch. And next, my $15 a month or more supporters, Adam Christians, Aesthetic Degan, Andrew Snyder, Brian Layton, Empty Machine, Gail Girard, Grant Hughes, Ian Driscoll, Elon Capone, Jack L., Jacob Birnbaum, Joel Serrano Lozada, John Johnson, Kit Walker, Lee Fortier, Naderade, Nelson Guzman, Robert Reichel, Samuel Striz, Thomas Oppenheim, Victor Martinez, Waterfort, and Zachary F. Parker. Thanks to my Patreon supporters and thanks to you for watching. Happy holidays to you. Whatever holiday you celebrate, hopefully you celebrate at least one holiday because holidays are fun. I know I'm biased because I'm one of those holiday celebrators.